Welcome back. DJ Vic Vapor with you. Logic Pro 10, beginner's course. And so in the previous lesson, we opened up and talked about some of our options, getting an audio channel uh, set up. So let's take a little bit closer look at some of these features on the audio channel. And we'll look at adding additional channels. So we've got the mute button, solo, the chord enabled, and the input. So if you see as I'm selecting mute, it's also on the inspector doing the same thing and corresponding with it there. Solo, record enabled, and then inspector. All these guys are actually updating on the inspector as we choose them. We can also pan left and right. And again, that's being updated on the inspector. Or we can just hover over the edge of the line here, and we can, if you don't want to see that information, we can shorten and make that small. The uh, little logo or icon that comes with the audio track is kind of a default. If you wanted to change that, you can simply double, or hang on a second here. Control click it or right click depending on what your mouse options are and once you do that you have let's say let me get away from this for a minute let's say we were going to name this a uh, I don't know so let's say we were going to sing so it's going to be a vocal track all right so we can I just double clicked right here by the way and then it gives you that option to name it and it's important to get in a it's a really good kind of producer habit to get into naming tracks um, in Logic Pro 10 now that I've named this uh, vocal track if we do go ahead and record something here it's going to save it with that same metadata information on our hard drive whatever title we give it here it'll give that audio information on our hard drive when it's saved so let's uh, control click or right click um, our icon now that we know it's a vocal track we can pick an icon that would maybe correspond and make sense that way. I mean, you can pick any icon you want here, drums, bass, guitar, keyboards, anything that makes sense to that track for easy uh, visual reference. You can uh, pick, you know, uh, if it's multiple vocals, a chorus maybe, um, just anything that makes sense to you visually. So, and you, once you select it, it goes right here. And that's a nice way to keep your uh, audio track organized. So let's take a look at adding an additional track. So previously, you know, we, we went to file and open new, but now that we've got one open, we can just click the add button right here. It says new tracks, and it's going to give us our screen that we discussed before. And we, before we did audio, uh, this time I'm going to do a guitar and bass track. And you see some of the things have changed here. Let's hit create. Now, it's got the input inspector already on by default. Because it's assuming we have maybe an external guitar hooked up and we want to listen to that sound before we record it. But you can probably hear my voice being affected by the... Uh, plugins that are on this channel strip. So each one that I choose is going to affect my voice according to those. Plugins. Move some of this out of the way. So let me, I'm going to take that off. So we opened up the, uh, and depending on which one we select, as far as um, a channel strip or a um, package there, it's going to update the uh, processing information that it automatically adds to that channel strip. So this one's got a compressor, a channel EQ, an amp, pedal board, noise gate, 
and that's kind of what you heard affecting my voice. So if I go back here, these things, my voice is actually being processed through there as a guitar or an external instrument would. And as we select different packages here, each one has its own individual uh, pre-assigned little plugins associated with it. So let's go and add, now we've got the vocal track, we've got a guitar track, let's add another track. This time let's select software instrument. So instantly you notice how that changed. Multi-timbral, it's just given me the output, the input's gone. I'm going to take off open library just to show you the difference between having it on and having it off when the track opens. So let's create. And now we've created this track right here, but it didn't really assign anything. It's just an empty track. It didn't assign any uh, processing effects or anything like that. It's asking for me to choose off of our package menu over here what I want exactly. Essentially, there's no sound or anything available to me. So um, now that I've selected uh, Deluxe Modern, it's kind of set up the unnecessary processing and plugins in bus routing and, and things like that for this particular uh, track. And as I select, again, those things update to different different setups and arrangements. So I should have... Stop that. I don't have my keyboard hooked up to give you any preview of this sound. But maybe... We can uh, preview it this way. There you go. Get a little little idea of what it's going to sound like here. Just loop that guy for us. So there's the Wurlitzer. And as we change, the sound will change accordingly. So that one opened up empty, and it, it asked me to come over here and make a choice on my own. Let me show you, let me stop this. Let me show you if we add a track, and we have the, and we're going to go with software instrument, but we have the open library selected. Now watch the difference. Now this guy opened up down below here, um, and it came as a classic electric piano default already set right here for us. So it's got like a default in an in open library for us under that circumstance. So, and then again we can go over here. And make the changes we feel necessary and and add you know whatever we feel is perfect sound we're looking for for the project so let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson and continue to take a closer look